So these uh, these people that come and visit, all these different services that we've got going on, people are saying, wow, this is amazing. What is like, what would be some of your advice to people if they were, if somebody is watching this from another state or from another agency or another part of Ohio or whatever, what would be your advice to like do something like this, a program like Stepping Stones? Because we know how powerful it is, how meaningful it is. What would be your advice to other people? Well, if you're going, if you're going to make an effort to try and recreate what anything similar to what they have at Stepping Stone House, you're going to have to have a tremendous amount of will to do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and one of the things that we haven't talked about that, uh, again, has always been one of the things that has impressed people from outside to come yeah. to look is the staff at mm -hmm. Stepping Stone House. And, you know, they don't get enough credit for what they know as a result of doing that work. In other right. words, you don't know what you don't know right. about this. Sure. And a lot of times people don't understand that Stepping Stone House has created a staff culture mm -hmm. uh, that is so focused upon the, the client, the children, and on learning and on growing their skills. Uh, but a lot of it, you know, in terms of the quality of the staff has come from them doing that job for a long period of time mm -hmm. and then passing it on to someone else. Yeah. That's what would make it so difficult right. to do this anywhere else is mm -hmm. because you would not have, you'd have to go through that whole process of creating a culture of excellence right. with your staff. Right. Um, but again, it, it would be it would be a tall order to recreate what how do you doing. get to how do you get to chapter 15? You got to start at chapter you got to start at chapter one. You <laughs> right. have to start with trying to cultivate, you know, people who want to do this work. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy for us. I mean, we went through a lot of staff in the first three or four years of the program mm -hmm. uh, because people thought they would like to work in residential and then found out very difficult thing to do. <laughs> they thought they would like to work with kids. Yeah. They thought they'd like to work in the environment. I, I mean, we've, we've had, again, that was one of the other things that impressed uh, people from outside was to walk into a residential environment where you had all these kids right. maneuvering around and you had staff, you had meals and, and homework and, and parents attending, you know, AA and NA meetings and, yeah just how to manage that culture. So yeah. that would be the beginning point would be if I, we were looking to start this any place else. And of course the counseling center probably will start this other place. Yeah, prices. absolutely. Yeah. That's, you know, it, it will come down to how do you trans transfer that culture of excellence when it comes to staff? Mm -hmm. How do you do that somewhere else? Right. And how do you prepare yourself that there'll be people that'll come in that have excellent qualifications. Mm -hmm. They have excellent skills, but they can't, they can't hang right with yeah. this with this environment. Yeah, uh, and uh, but to be able to look at the entire continuum of care, mm -hmm. it's a it's possible to do it, but you would have to have a tremendous amount of will. Yeah, to stick with it and work hard. Right, and that's I think what separated the counseling center from sure. a lot of other agencies, at least around the state and where I know, is that the level of effort that staff have been willing to put forward far exceeds what exists most places. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then uh, effort, excellence, two words that I absolutely see like crossover within to our uh, agency and, and just what's put forth every day. And then it's transferred over into other programs, right? So yes. any, anything you would add as far as like what advice you would give somebody that's trying to serve like the, the moms or moms with kids or expecting mothers population in the substance use disorder world? Patience. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, I'd add that in too, right? Yeah, Phyllis? absolutely. We're, I mean, we're, it's, we're done with children that have behavioral issues. Um, they act out, but it's so beautiful to watch those kiddos walk in and then yeah. to walk out a completely different kiddo because again, they've recovered right along with mom. Yeah. Um, so just the, the patience, the education on making sure that you are fully aware of what these children go through right along mm -hmm. with their mothers. Oh yeah. Um, and just knowing that they need loved. That's, that's yeah. what it is. They, they need guidance. They need you to be patient with them and to show them. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think the expectations of you should know this because you're a mom, you've been doing this for eight years. If right. they have an eight year old, right. that's not realistic in the no culture doubt. that we're serving. No doubt. Um, they, I was never shown, you know, until, Someone mm -hmm. took me under their wing at Stepping Stones and taught me how to yep. be a mom and do those things. So yep. um, dedication, time, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that yeah. all that all goes hands in hands yeah. with serving this population. Yeah. So then what's uh and this is for both of you guys, like what's what's next for Stepping Stones? Like what do we need? What needs to go on internally or what do moms need next? What's kind of on the horizon of things we're looking at to continue to get better for, for moms and kids and families? Uh, more. Just more? <laughs> Scale it up, right? More. Uh, unfortunately, there's more of a need for it. Yeah. Um, you know, they're hearing about us. There's more moms that have two children now instead of just one child now. Yeah. Uh, each child takes a bed, so it's just more. And that's a you can come into stepping stones with multiple children, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we we take up to two children, um, mm -hmm. up to the ages of twelve. Again, yeah. um, we take moms that have no children that just need education, just need help with meeting the goals of their reunification plan, sure. or they have a safe place and they just need the education. We right. do that too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of those things that um, how many when Stepping Stone started and had the first house, how many how many beds, how many people were we serving? We at were that a point sixteen time? bed facility, but that was based on how many kids were coming. So in. you know, you could have eight moms, eight kids. You could have four moms. Oh yes, it's Jenga. <laughs> yeah. That it Jenga, is. Yeah, I yeah. play Jenga every day with admissions. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, mhm. Mm mhm. Mm with mom and then yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then from a 16 bed facility, do you know what your total bed count is right now? Like how many how many places you can offer moms and kids? 2.5 or 2.1? Both. Let's go both. Uh, we're about 60. Okay. Total. So and least. that's just clients. That's mm -hmm. about 60 plus. Like I said, we served 70 kids last month. Okay. So we're at like 130. So we've like 10x growth. And oh, then, yeah. And then, then that's to, to your point, like what's next as well. We just need more and probably in different places and yep. bring this stuff to other communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, man. Anything else before we wrap up? You guys have, no surprise to me, been absolutely great. Well, I have loved hearing about all this stuff. The one thing I was thinking about when Stephanie was talking about, you know, the you know people progressing through services. Mm -hmm. And again, we are dealing with the disease of addiction, sure, uh, which does involve relapse, oftentimes involves multiple episodes of treatment for somebody to get well. Not not different than cancer, diabetes, heart disease or any any other illness. Sure. Uh, the original director of the agency, Rem Glass, had kind of one philosophy, mm -hmm. and that was we want to make it easy for people to come back. OK, you know, so for someone to be treated in a in a way that is respectful and considerate and informative, uh, while at the same time truthful. Right. But at the same time, if this person isn't successful, we want to make it easy for them to come back. Right. And I've not seen any program anywhere that does a better job of that than Stepping Stone House. Yeah where people are able to come back mm -hmm. if things, you know, go sideways, right. uh, if there's a, if there's a, a relapse or if there's just a continuing need for another service right. that they didn't recognize at the yeah. time. Uh, Stepping Stone House has been that, been that model for the counseling center yeah. in terms of how people are able to come back and re-engage in services, uh, start over, start somewhere else in the, in the process and then continue to recover. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else from you that you'd like to add before we go? We just we just need more. Yeah, we need more. We do it for the kids. No, you know? no. Hey, yeah. they should do something for the kids after all, man. Again, appreciate you guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you all next time.